What's going on guys? Welcome in. My name is Dr. Jim Cellini. I'm a board certified practicing veterinary neurologist and neurosurgeon. Recently, the American Kennel Club or the AKC released the most popular dog breed list for 2021. So in this video, I'm just going to more or less kind of shoot off the cuff and give some of my 10,000 foot view thoughts on these breeds, some of the issues that I see a lot of in my practice and see my colleagues deal with. And I'm also going to touch on the importance of pet insurance as it relates to each of these breeds. Before I do that, guys, if you don't mind hitting that like and subscribe button real quick and maybe leave a comment below, that would be great. And also, if you don't mind subscribing to me and my brother's channel, Cellini Rounds, we post a podcast on YouTube and Spotify every Sunday at around 9 a.m. So if you could please subscribe to that channel as well. Thank you very much. All right, let's get started. Wow, I got some graphics going here today. All right, number 10 on this list is the Dachshund. This is one of the most common breeds tied with the French Bulldogs that I see as a neurologist. With dachshunds, the conversation begins and ends with disc disease and disc herniations. Approximately 25% of all dachshunds will be affected by a disc herniation. That can mean a wide variety of different things, but will be affected by a disc herniation in their life. A lot of pet parents ask me, what can I do to prevent a disc herniation in my dachshund or other breed that's prone to it? And the short answer is you really can't prevent it, unfortunately. In general, I recommend people with dachshunds keep their dachshund fit and healthy. Don't keep them cooped up all the time. Don't try to lock them in a crate 24 seven to try to can, uh, prevent a disc herniation. You let them be active um, and through being fit, that might actually reduce their risk of a disc herniation. The cost of an MRI and a back surgery for your dachshund is gonna run you a total of about $6,000 to $10,000 depending on your market. So if you have that liquid cash laying around, great, awesome, good for you. Most people don't. So if you don't, I would recommend getting pet insurance for your dachshund as soon as possible, no later than the age of one. And the reason the age of one is so important for dachshunds is because they generally don't herniate a disc until about that age. They could do it earlier than that. So again, air towards the side of caution, but no later than the age of one, because once they start to show a sign of either back or neck pain, the insurance company is going to review that and determine that they have a pre-existing condition and not cover their disc herniations going forward in the future. So keep that in mind and get your dachshund insured against a disc herniation. Make sure it covers MRI, surgery, the whole kit and caboodle um, as soon as you possibly can. Again, such amazing graphics on my part. All right, so apparently the ninth most popular dog breed in America is the German short-haired pointer. I gotta say, I'm pretty surprised that's the ninth most popular dog breed in America. I did not expect that. And I don't really see this dog much uh, from for neurologic disease, so that's a good start. Overall, this is a pretty healthy breed. I mean, I tried to look up on PubMed any major issues, and all I saw was kind of like sporadic case reports here and there. Um, you don't see them a ton in the hospital. The big things you're going to see them for is like orthopedic disease, pretty standard stuff that most breeders kind of try to breed out. Stuff like hip dysplasia and elbow dysplasia. They're an extremely active dog. They're meant for like hunting and tracking. So they need a ton of exercise and almost like direction in their life. And you're going to see a lot of orthopedic injuries that pop up from just their active lifestyle. Um, but otherwise, they're a pretty healthy breed. Just don't get them if you live in like the inner city and can't go outdoors with them a lot and use them for their intended purpose. And as far as insurance goes, unlike the Dachshund where I would strongly recommend it or even more strongly recommend it with some of the other breeds I'm about to talk about, I would leave insurance kind of up to you, the individual regarding this breed. I'd say it's kind of optional just based on your own individual financial situation. All right, number eight on this list, the eighth most popular dog breed in 2021 in America is the Rottweiler. Now, Rottweilers as a breed are a little bit low key, a breed that has a lot of health issues going on and that a lot of people don't know about. To start with, they're really big, so you're gonna have your issues like hip dysplasia and elbow dysplasia. Rottweilers have a number of neurodegenerative diseases that are genetic as well. Now, fortunately, these days you can test for these. Um, I recommend panels like a wisdom panel or even directly off of the UC Davis website. And if you get a Rottweiler from a breeder, your breeder should be providing these results to you and you should definitely check the genetic testing for these types of diseases because these neurodegenerative diseases are fatal oftentimes and they're not treatable. So they're really bad diseases to see. You don't want to see them. And I've only seen them fortunately a couple of times in my career. Other things Rottweilers get, I've seen a few of these dogs with disc herniations, oddly enough. They're not shaped like Dachshunds or French Bulldogs by any means or classic breeds, but I've seen disc herniations in Rottweilers. I've seen also a number of spine and brain tumors in Rottweilers 
as well as spinal malformations uh, in the breed. And none of this stuff you can genetic test for. So definitely be aware of that. Because of these issues that can be kind of hiding out and because of their size, I would pretty much across the board recommend pet insurance for this breed. Again, because they oftentimes require a ton of care due to the combination of immobility and some of the, just the severity of the problems that they can get. Number seven, the seventh most popular dog breed in 2021 in America is the Beagle. We see Beagles a lot in veterinary neurology and veterinary medicine in general, probably because they're very popular. But the big things that we see in neurology are epilepsy, meningitis, and disc herniations. Beagles are a breed that get disc herniations, so the same rules apply as with Dachshunds and French Bulldogs. You want to get insurance for these dogs as soon as possible so that you can avoid the cost and the life and financial devastation that a disc herniation can bring to your pet and to you. Um, but aside from disc herniations, beagles are pretty much the poster breed, aside from like maybe boxers too, of a condition called steroid responsive meningitis. And this is where their immune system turns on and just starts attacking their nervous system, causing inflammation. If you have a beagle and your beagle is around the age of one or close to it and they develop neck pain and a fever suddenly, and very oftentimes they'll just look sad. They'll kind of have like a droopy beagle look to them and just look like they're really mopey too. Less specific sign. But if your beagle starts to do this, I would very, very highly suspect this steroid responsive meningitis condition. We see it all the time. It's one of the most misunderstood yet the most common conditions that we see in veterinary medicine. Uh, but just to be aware of that too, there's no genetic test for it or anything like that. It just pops up uh, here and there, but we see it a lot overall. Um, but aside from those things, epilepsy is another problem that we see a lot in beagles. I have a number of epileptic beagle patients in my practice and previous places where I've worked. So be aware of all these things. But yeah, this is a breed that I would highly recommend getting insurance for uh, as soon as possible, as soon as you get them. All right, number six on this list, and this is where it gets a little bit on the depressing side for me, and that is bulldogs. And they mean English bulldogs. But suffice it to say, Bulldogs have so many health problems and the default setting for the modern day Bulldog is so unhealthy that I do not recommend that anybody purchase one of these dogs simply because of the ethical ramifications I think that we have in creating these, these pets. Um, until we do proper outcrossing and change the shape of this dog and get away from these extreme body modifications that we're doing to them, I do not recommend anybody purchase this dog. Rescuing these breeds is one thing, entirely separate. But buying these dogs and continuing to propagate the production of this breed, I do not recommend doing it. But if you do do it, I would get insurance for this dog as soon as possible and I would get the maximum amount of coverage because pretty much every organ system in Bulldog's bodies is affected and abnormal in some way or very, very likely to be. Poodles are apparently the fifth most popular dog breed in America now. And poodles are honestly like really great dogs. We're talking about standard poodles here. Miniaturized poodles, again, we see tons of disc herniations in. And in general, this speaks to the problem when you miniaturize an animal, that's not good for it. It's almost like natural selection would not miniaturize things. But standard poodles are really good dogs. They're super smart. They're very attentive. They're very well behaved from what I've seen. Um, I see them mainly for epilepsy, and I also know that a lot of poodles struggle because they're kind of like deep chested. They have a lot of issues with uh, what's called a GDV or their stomach can twist. So they may need prophylactic surgery to prevent that from happening or actual surgery to uh, treat it as it happens. But poodles seem to be really healthy dogs otherwise, and I've seen very, very old poodles who seem to be doing pretty well at ages that were unheard of like 10 or 15 years ago. So. I think it's a really healthy breed overall, as far as I can tell. Now, number four on this list is a breed that honestly kind of confuses me. And the breed that we're talking about is the German Shepherd Dog. Um, so it's the fourth most popular dog breed now. And we're going to just see a lot of these patients by default because of their popularity. But I remember going through vet school, almost every disease that we learned about in dogs, the German Shepherd was like the number one dog on the list of breeds that get this problem. Like, so say we learned about... Um, a spine issue of some sort, or meningitis, or a joint issue, or some endocrine disease. It would always be a German Shepherd that seemed to pop up towards the like top three of the list. So German Shepherds tend to get like every disease there is. Like you, get, there's no rules that German Shepherds really follow when it comes to diseases. 
Um, but on the other hand, I've seen German Shepherds and they're used as working dogs, obviously, like the military and police and stuff like that, that are super healthy and super agile. And they're like some of the most athletic dogs there are. So I don't know, honestly, where the German Shepherd falls in terms of like, you know, its overall health as a breed. I think it's just all over the place, frankly. Um, but in general, for a German Shepherd, I would highly recommend you get pet insurance for this pet just because they're, you know, probably going to have something happen to them, whether it's a GDV like poodles and stomach bloats and stuff like that, foreign bodies, orthopedic injuries, neurologic disease. I, I think something's probably going to happen that you're going to have a big cost expenditure with this dog. So I would recommend getting pet insurance as soon as possible. All right, guys, number three is probably my favorite dog breed, and that is the Golden Retriever. I love this breed. I had a Golden Retriever growing up. She was uh, the sweetest dog I have ever had. Shout out Maggie. Um, she lived a lovely life till about the age of 10 or so. So I'm a little bit partial to Golden Retrievers. Um, I think they're great dog, but unfortunately Golden Retrievers are a breed we see tons of health problems and cancer being the big one. There's multiple types of cancers that unfortunately Golden Retrievers are prone to, things like brain tumors, uh, spleen hemangiosarcomas, which is a really malignant, nasty type of cancer they get on their spleen that can cause a, um, internal bleeding and be a life-threatening situation, lymphoma, all the nasty stuff. Despite that, I, I think these dogs are amazing dogs. Um, I would obviously recommend getting health insurance because I do think that with Golden Retrievers, it's almost an inevitability that at some point late in their life, if you haven't already, you're going to face something that is very expensive and very difficult or impossible to treat with them, maybe even like an emergency situation. So have a full coverage of insurance uh, ready, um, you know, there in the background for your Golden Retriever. Um, but I would recommend if anybody wants a Golden Retriever and they have the ability to exercise them properly, I, you know, hats off to you, go right ahead. I think Golden Retrievers are like, yeah, they're probably the best dog breed in my opinion. And now to the most depressing part of this list, and that would be that the French Bulldog has made its way to be the second most popular dog breed. I say depressing not because I hate French Bulldogs. I really like individual French Bulldogs that I meet. They're very fun. But unfortunately, the general public just does not seem to be aware of how afflicted this breed is. And this is not a backyard breeder or unethical breeder versus, you know, top of the line breeder, dog show breeder type thing. This is not an issue of of you know good or bad breeding this is an issue where we've created an animal we've taken a you know what used to be a wolf and turned it into a french bulldog and we've done that by imparting a ton of malformations to this dog's body okay that's how we got to this point you can't malform a dog to this degree and not suffer some serious health consequences and that's what we're starting to figure out over the last decade or so um, and kind of start to formalize data that shows that this breed is afflicted with so many problems. So in general, I do not recommend people purchase this dog breed. I think purchasing this dog contributes to the continued production of a type of breed that is just too unhealthy from a general sense. There's just too much animal suffering that goes into simply creating French Bulldogs. I can't recommend it. If you do, then I would recommend you get pet insurance as soon as possible. This breed has some of the highest premiums that you'll see, usually in about the $100 to $150 a month range to cover everything. Um, and I would get it as soon as you get the dog, um, you know, as early as possible in their life. The number one most popular dog breed in America is the Labrador Retriever. This is pretty much the case every year. This dog's very popular for a reason. It's a very athletic, fun, good personality, very capable dog, capable of work, capable of play, hunting, tracking, all that sort of stuff. Um, we see Labradors all the time in the hospital for all sorts of problems, but that's probably got more to do with their popularity than anything else with a lot of things. Now, there's some exceptions. There's some Labradors that have, you know, poor genetics and whatnot, and there's some conditions that Labradors get um, that we see consistently as like a Labrador thing. The biggest thing to be aware of is as Labradors age, their nerves seem to degenerate and they develop what's called a peripheral polyneuropathy. The uh, acronym for this nowadays is called GULP. It's called Geriatric Onset Laryngeal Paralysis Polyneuropathy. Basically, all that means 
is that the peripheral nerves in their body seem to just not work as well as they age. We don't know why this is. It's not treatable, but oftentimes it starts with this sort of like raspy breathing that they have, which is the laryngeal paralysis part. And then they also develop this sort of like clown shoe, kind of floppy gait with all their limbs that's a result of the peripheral nerve damage going on. So that's usually an age-related thing that occurs again later in life with Labradors. Um, but otherwise, Labradors are a pretty healthy breed. If you do routine genetic testing for them, um, you're going to pretty much be doing all the testing you can. And while that does not guarantee against any sort of problem in a Labrador or any other breed, um, yeah, I think Labradors are a great dog to have if you're capable of exercising them. Don't keep them pent up all day. But um, yeah, good job. Labrador number one. Fully support that. All right, guys, this concludes my thoughts on the top 10 breeds list of 2021. We'll see what changes in 2022. Uh, but if you like this video, let me know. Leave a comment below. Hit the like and subscribe button, all that good stuff. Uh, also, let me know if you'd like me to do a deep dive on any of the breeds I mentioned and kind of get more into the nitty-gritty details of their problems and their kind of pros and cons. Uh, would love to do that. Would love to do, like, individual breed-type videos if you guys want that. But, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.